where the mortgage jersey company the copy of the commission required the following one copy of the memorandum and article of association of the company two copy of the board resolution authorizing the creation of the mortgage three copy of the certificate of incorporation of the company where the company is the mortgage or the mortgage documents charge must be registered within 90 days of its execution section 197 of the company and allied matters act Convenance in mortgages. A mortgage is a contractual transaction between the parties. The law allows the parties to a contract to agree on specific terms and be bound by those terms of the contract. As such, parties to a mortgage transaction may decide and agree on certain terms to be incorporated in the transaction. Convenance in mortgages are specific agreements between the parties reached to regulate the relationship between the mortgagor and the mortgagee in a particular mortgage transaction. Convenience to repay the principal and interest at a fixed rate. The mortgage sum is the principal amount advanced to the mortgage or by the mortgagee, while the interest is the sum accruing on the principal over a period of time. This convenience must be included in a deed of mortgage. Parties should avoid their minds to what would be the rate of interest to be paid. Parties will make reference to customs and usages in banking. Where the mortgage is a bank, the rule is that parties are bound by the rate of interest that they have agreed on. Where there is no express agreement, the bank is entitled to charge interest on the basis of customs and usages or on the ground that the customer has impliedly assented where he allowed his account to be debited and he did not protest. A bank will not be able to unilaterally charge compound interest on the sum advanced. The essence of this covenant is to aid the mortgagee to know where his power of sale may arise. 20th Century Banking Corporation Limited and Wilkinson and another 1977 CH99. It also shows what the mortgage's cause of action will be either failure to pay the principal sum or the interest. Very important, where the legal due date has not passed, any action taken by the mortgagee will be held to be premature. Also, the covenant to repay the principal and interest must be drafted as a positive inducement and not a negative inducement. Example 1. The interest payable is 15%, but where the mortgagee fails to pay on time, the interest rate shall be 20%. Usually, the color is frowned when the covenant is drafted as is shown above. The court being the court of equity will interpret this clause as a penalty and will consequently not uphold it. Covenant to insure the property. This covenant is to provide for what will happen in the event of any damage or destruction to the property. This is very important as the transaction is dependent on mortgage property. Any damage or destruction to the property would adversely affect the right of the parties. The mortgagee must ensure that the property is insured. The covenant should contain the following. A. The insurance company. B. Date of commencement of the insurance policy. C. The risks to be insured against. What determines the risk to be insured against? 1. The use to which the property is to be put. 2. The location of the property, whether the property is located in a flooded area or an area prone to erosion. 3. The nature of the property itself, whether the property is developed or not. 4. Applicable government policy. 5. The premium and ways to pay it. The premium payable must not be outrageous. 6. The person to insure the property and whether or not the person is to insure in his name or in the name of the other party. 7. The application of the insurance money in the event of damage. In legal mortgages, the mortgagee usually insures the property against damage by fire or any effect of an insurable nature, and the premium speed for such insurance shall be charged on the mortgage property in addition to the mortgaged money. Section 1 to 3, sub 1 2 of the PCL, Section 19, sub 1 2 of the Conveyancing Act. However, where the mortgagor insures, the mortgagee should be granted the power of attorney by the mortgagor as his lawful attorney in order to be able to collect the insurance money upon damage of the property. The mortgagee upon receipt of the insurance money will disburse the funds. First, to pay off the principal sum and interest owed in by the mortgagor and then render the remaining amount to the mortgagor. As such, the mortgagee will not have to wait for reinstatement of the damaged property. Covenant to consolidate different mortgages. Consolidation of mortgages occur where a mortgage uses different properties to secure a loan of money from a mortgagee. The mortgagee tries to prevent him from redeeming the property separately. Mortgages in this manner are described as consolidated in the sense that the mortgagee will not be allowed to redeem any of the properties without also redeeming the other securities. Generally, the law leans against the consolidation of mortgages except where the parties expressly agree to it in their deed of mortgage, Section 17 of the Conveyancing Act, Section 115 of the Property and Conveyancing Law, all prohibit consolidation of mortgages. 
where parties expressly agree to allow for consolidation of mortgages, four things must exist. One, it must be the same mortgage or two, it must be the same mortgagee. Three, the legal due date must have passed. Four, it must have been expressly agreed by the parties and stated in the deed of mortgage. Observance and performance of covenant in the head lease. A lease or a sub lease usually have attendant covenant in the head lease, e.g., covenant on use to pay rent, not to sublet, repairs, etc. The mortgager is under an obligation to observe this covenant. Where the mortgager mortgages the property, he should agree with the mortgagee to ensure that the mortgagee observes the covenant in the head lease. Where the mortgagee does not wish to be liable for observing the covenants and conditions in the head lease, the parties may convenant that the mortgagee continues to be liable to perform the covenants in the head lease. Convenance to repair. This covenant deals with the reinstatement of parts of the property that are falling into these repairs. It is a very important covenant because the value of the property must be maintained. If the property depreciates, chances are the value of the property will also reduce. This would affect the value of the property when the mortgage is ready to exercise its power of sale. It is therefore necessary that this covenant should be of primary concern to the mortgagee. The parties should agree on ways to repair and as well list out the places to be repaired. All these are to be included in the schedule to the mortgage deed. It is advisable that the mortgagee carries out the repairs and subsequently charge the cost of the repairs on the mortgage property. However, repairs does not include rebuilding of the property. Covenant to create lease and sub lease on the property. This largely depends on whether the lease was created before or after the mortgage. If there was a lease on the property before the mortgage was created, the lease will be binding on the mortgagor and even on his subsequent purchaser and the mortgagee will not be entitled to collect rent. When the lease is created after the mortgage, the determining factor will be whether either party is in possession, in which case the party in possession of the mortgage property can create a lease that will be binding on the other. Section 18 sub 1 of the Conveyancing Act and Section 1 to 1 sub 1 of the Property and Conveyancing Law provides stores. A mortgage of land while in possession shall, as against every encumbrance, have the powers to make from time to time any such lease of the mortgage land or any property thereof. Where the mortgage is in possession, the mortgagee's solicitor should ensure that the covenant is caused in such a way as to provide that the mortgagee's consent in writing should first be had and obtained before the mortgagee can lease or sublease the property. However, such consent is not to be unreasonably withheld in the case of a responsible and respectable person. Restriction of redemption for a term certain. What this means is that the mortgagee's right of redemption may be expressed to be inoperative for a certain period and can only become operative from a certain time after the creation of the mortgage. E.g., the right of redemption may not be operative during the first two years after the creation of the mortgage, but as from the third year, the mortgagee can redeem his property. The mortgagee may push for the insertion of this clause in the agreement in order to enjoy the interest which would accrue on the principal sum where the mortgagee does not redeem soon after the creation of the mortgage. Quick last note is powered by Rooms and Luxury. Your choice real estate agency in Lagos, Nigeria. Address is number 7 Tower, Connie Close of Illimai Crescent, Igwe Phone, Lake Lagos, Nigeria. Tell WhatsApp 081 427 And send your emails to Ronums and Luxury at gmail.com. Instagram, Ronums and Luxury. Facebook, Ronums and Luxury. You can call them for all your real estate questions. For sponsorship and advert placements, please contact 091-259-21620 or send an email to resistantpartners.chambers at gmail.com.